Missouri Baptist came into Bishop Darcy Stadium with guns a-blazing, connecting on two 80-plus yard touchdowns in the first one minute and 20 seconds of the game. But your number four ranked University of St. Francis football team took the lead 21 to 14 with six minutes and five seconds left to play in the first quarter en route to the 56 to 24 victory. Well, the first quarter lasted a day and a half, I think. It was a long one. Uh, but they came right out. First two plays, man, they, they go vertical. And, you know, they, they scored quickly, so we responded. I was uh, proud of our players. We just came right back and stood right in there and exchanged punches early. Took a lead, never looked back. So Nick had a great day throwing the ball. Uh, minus two plays, our defense played great football. Um, receivers, McDowell, Coat, Kelso, my gosh, had, had great days. Green ran the ball well. So we did a lot of good things. So uh, it was a good victory for us. And uh, now moving on, you can't believe it, game 10. Quarterback Nick Ferrer threw for 421 yards, his second career 400 plus yard game, and six touchdowns, which is his personal best and ties the USF record set by quarterback Jeremy Hiblin in 2000. He was named Mid-States Football Association Player of the Week for a USF record seventh time, which breaks a tie he had with former linebacker Brian Kurtz, solidifying that Ferrer is one of the best quarterbacks to ever wear Cougar Blue. Well, there's no question about it. Probably across the country in the NAIA uh, as well. Uh, right now, he's playing so confidently. Uh, he's such a student of the game and studies film, and I think now is finding the groove, you know, of relaxing and playing and having fun. Receiver is doing the same thing. Offensive line doing, uh, taking a lot of pride in protecting him and keeping him upright. And then, uh, you know, again, our, our defense. Uh, swarms of football and does some great things. You know, we uh, basically started substituting with a little over 10 minutes to go in the third quarter when it was 56 to 14. So we got some rest there as well and got to see some younger players. The younger players did get into the game after senior Seth Coates touchdown with 13 minutes and 27 seconds left to play in the third quarter made the score 56 to 14. On senior day, Three seniors scored two touchdowns apiece with Coat, Monte McDowell, and Aaron Harris. Senior Akeem Kelsall caught the longest touchdown pass with a 63 yard reception for a score. Yeah, I was very happy for him too. You know, he's such a great kid and he just loves being around his teammates in the program. Joy's playing so much and uh, man, he caught that uh, seam route and took it to the house, ran out, you know, outran some people. So I was very happy for him, and he's playing very well. A special day for the Cougs, but more importantly for the seniors, who locked arms and marched out behind the captains for the coin flip to start the game. Yeah, it's definitely a special moment, especially because you come in with a bunch of guys um, freshman year. Some of those guys are red shirt um, freshman when I was a freshman. It's just a special moment. You get to spend four years with guys and you get to go out there um, before the game and just stand out in the middle of the field um, with all of them. It just takes you back to a bunch of memories through working um, since you were a freshman with all those guys sweating in the weight room. Um, and it just brings you back to all those memories. So it's a real special moment to even go out there, um, play your senior year um, with those guys and just see um, all the fruit that came from um, all the relationships that you've built over the years. So. After four years spent with his Cougar family, Harris has many great memories. Yeah, I would say um, my, probably my favorite memory was freshman year. Um, we had to run 18 110s my freshman year instead of now, I think it's like 15. And that was probably the worst experience I've ever had, but it was so much fun at the end. I mean, everybody gets together. Um, I think that midsummer conditioning test just is always the funnest part, but also the missions trip. I feel like you got so close with a bunch of guys and um, just to see um, how much of an impact you can make on people's lives, um, just being with a bunch of football guys, seeing the, um, how they can be soft, kind of teddy bear type of guys around a bunch of little kids, um, 
you just don't see that when you're out here on the football field. It's a pretty aggressive sport, but um, just goes to show that um, the guys here are so loving, so nice guys. Um, so it was real cool. A soft teddy bear, Harris is not on the football field. And he can be focused and intense off it as well. As an exercise science major, last year Aaron started training the softball players, helping them with their 5 a.m. workouts. Yeah, um, I just love being around athletes. So I love being make an impact on people's lives. Um, so I think for me it was kind of just, um, I enjoy strength and conditioning, something my um, family kind of enjoys working out and exercising. My brother um, was a strength, uh, assistant strength coach at Indiana State, went on back to our high school to be the strength coach. And it's just something that we enjoy doing, but yeah, I love being able to make an impact on people's lives, um, just um, from a mental, physical, and spiritual standpoint. So it's just something I really enjoy. So um, a lot of those girls know what they're doing already. So it's kind of it was nice going in last year, kind of starting from scratch. Um, also learning myself, how do I run a weight room? How do I um, even coach girls? That is so difficult, um, but this year it's so much fun. You come in, um, they're comfortable with you, you're comfortable with them, and just being able to um, have a good time with them, but they also know what they're doing, so being able to motivate them and just seeing them work so much harder this year, and um, they're coming to work every day, um, and they got so much leadership on that team, so it's been awesome for sure. His leadership in the weight room and in athletics may have been guided by his two older brothers, but growing up, it was his twin sister, Michaela that Aaron relied on. Yeah, I, I mean, I was the brunt of the family, so I have two older brothers. Um, one's doing, does fighting now, so he's into jiu-jitsu, so he goes around and fights. Um, and then, yeah, um, so I grew up kind of the runt of the family um, and just getting beat up by my older brothers and just hanging out um, with my sister and her, uh, my cousin was like the people, two people I hung out with because he, Everybody else was older and always just pick on me, but yeah, so I really developed that competitive edge at a young age, um, but um, yeah, it's awesome having a twin sister for sure. I know she came down last week for senior day. Um, I usually don't tell people about her, so she was kind of aggravated about that, so I had to throw a picture on. I love her so much. Um, she's been such a uh, major supporter of me throughout my whole career with football and school, always helping me in the classroom when we were growing up through high school. So, um, yeah, I owe so much to her for sure. Three plays into the Cougars' first possession, Harris grabbed a pass from Ferrer and raced 32 yards for a score. He currently ranks number two in scoring for USF with 10 touchdowns, two scores behind Coat, and leads all running backs averaging six yards per carry. Um, I think why this year has been so enjoyable is just going back from freshman year, coming in, um, finding a lot of my identity in football. Um, and then over this last couple of years, just that slowly breaking away and being able to come in um, senior year and really just enjoy football for what it is. Um, I feel like um, the place in my identity found in football, placing in um, my relationship with God um, and just finding how that has completely just freed me up to go out on the football field every day and just play for something more important um, for his name, his glory. Um, it's really just freed me up to really enjoy the sport, enjoy the teammates, um, and really just be excited to go out every day, practice, um, and just see how that has completely released me of any uh, expectations. Um, so it's really just freed me up to go have fun. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's where a lot of just the enjoyment um, and excitement to go out um, and even being able to play as well as I have this year has been just a gift. So it's been awesome. But the gifts aren't given to you. And with the continued success of the Cougar football program, there can be pressure to perform and answer the call. Yeah, I would say there's so much. I mean, there's a lot of pressure when you come in, especially um, with the um, we're winning program. <laughs> we win games, you know? Um, so that's a high expectation. There's always an expectation to achieve at such a high level every day, even in practice. And that's what makes this program so good, you know? Um, when you are um, expected to be good, expected to achieve in the classroom and in the sport and practice, it really sets the bar high to come in and 
um, challenge yourself. And um, I think um, where I went wrong was um, making that define. If, I, if things are going bad, it just breaks you down. So I think um, the coaches say it all the time. It's, I mean, it's a roller coaster. Football's a roller coaster. Things go bad, things go good. And being able to, things go bad, short term memory, let it go and move on. Um, and when things are going great, don't like, don't let it just, you know, keep um, define and be able to be lax because things are going good. But no, you got to constantly um, push it, constantly keep moving forward, next play, next play. So I'd say that's really future Cougars coming in is just um, realizing things are going to go bad. Um, things aren't always going to go your way, but you got to keep moving forward, forget about yesterday and move forward for sure. And head coach Kevin Donnelly continues to move forward with an NAIA leading 297 wins under his belt. Saturday's W over Mo Baptist marked his 100th MSFA Mideast League win. Well, that, that's nice. Uh, I, I love coaching because of the players. Um, I'd be lost without them. They keep me energized. and. Uh, can't wait to get here every day to see them and get ready for the next game. Uh, I've been blessed in my career. I've been at least smart enough to surround myself with good people and uh, had a lot of fun. Thankful for it. And Cougar Nation is thankful for Coach D. But up next is Davenport, and they could care less. They're a first-year program with a defense that ranks number six in the NAIA only giving up 262 yards a game. They also rank number three in kickoff and punt returns per attempt. Oh, they're strong. Again, when you have speed, you can make things happen in all three phases of the game. So they do that and all their special team units and uh, got big plays in the air and on the ground offensively. And uh, they're so athletic on defense, they just lay their ears back and apply pressure. I think their defensive line is very athletic, or athletic in the back end. So, it's gonna be a real challenge. I think this week, um, it definitely goes back to the offensive line. Um, if they come out as they always do and um, drive guys around, we'll be fine in the run game and that will be open up those passing lanes to Coat, Monte, Boswell, Keen, um, and let Nick throw a bunch of about 400 yards like he always seems to do. So it'll be fun. It'll be a good game for sure. Um, this is a team that made application to our conference, but you know we had heard that they were in transition to Division Two and the GLIAC, which they were, so they weren't admitted. Um, they will be in the GLIAC next year. Um, they are a fully funded Division Two program. And they have uh, some tremendous players. They've got a lot of redshirt freshmen playing, obviously, that we've run into them recruiting. They've got a lot of uh, GLIAC transfers. They've got MAC transfers. They've got a safety that's a transfer from Duke. So they, they are talented. They run extremely well. Um, they will not be embarrassed when they start competition in that GLIAC next year. <clears throat> so they are a challenge, you respect them, they've done things right. Um, it's going to be uh, round one of playoffs for us. If this Saturday marks round one of the playoffs for USF, then that means Aaron's career as a football player is coming to a close. But it ain't over yet. I didn't really ever think about it until senior night, um, senior day. It was kind of like, dang, we're almost done with the season, it's going by so fast. Um, so I think um, just playing each week at a time, um, I think that's where it's going to have to come down to is just focusing on what can I do today to make sure we continue to play, get to our um, team goal at the end of the season to win the national championship, um, but also just um, enjoying it, enjoying each other, pushing each other this week. Um, knowing that next week starts the playoffs, but we got to get through this week. We got to beat Davenport, and we got to focus on next week and come to work next week, and then figure out who we play first round. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a surreal moment, knowing that this could be the week after next, or um, three weeks from now could be the last week. So it definitely drives you to um, push the envelope a little more.
So it's time to kick it in gear. And Aaron's message is simple. Yeah, I would say let's go 1-0 on every single play. Um, I remember my high school coach always saying um, the championship teams are the people that during practice go 1-0 on every single play. Um, and by the end of practice, by the end of the game, um, you've won if you go 1-0 on every single play. Um, so I'd say just let's go 1-0 um, every single play of practice to the end of practice where it's 1-0 for that practice and then goes to the game and get, get another W.